In problem two, we're going to do some real basic cell references. So it asks us first to store this value in cell A2. So I have put some labels here. In cell A1, I said we're going to have A, and right below that, I'm going to put the value of A. In B1, I put B, and right below that, I'm going to put the value of B, and so forth. So basically, row one is like the title, the name of the value. So in cell A2, I'm going to type equals 3 times natural log of 5 divided by 7. Okay, so that is going to be the value of A. Press Enter. Again, mine seems to be rounding it to five decimal places right now. That's fine for, for this purposes. Let's go over to cell B2, and I'm going to put in the value of B. It says it equals 20 e to the 1.2. So I have to have equals 20 times exp parentheses 1.2. Right. And C2 it says, in cell C2, we are going to have it equal 2 times A plus 4 times B. Now, to make a cell reference, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this cell equals, it's going to be 2 times A. Now, remember, we put the value of A over here in cell A2. I want my value of C to equal 2 times that value in cell A2. So I can just click that cell, and it's saying it will equal 2 times the value in that cell, the value of cell A2, plus 4 times B. So plus 4 times B is here in cell B2. So I'll click that cell. Now, whatever is in these two cells, it will reference back to them. And cell C2 will equal 2 times what's here plus 4 times what's here. I press Enter. Now the nice thing about cell references is I can now just go into cell A2 and change it, for example. I could change the value of cell A2 to 5, for example, and it will automatically change the value of C2. It's now taking 2 times 5 plus 4 times cell B2. I could shell change B2 as well. Let's change it to 3. Again, it automatically changes cell C. It's taking 2 times 5 plus 4 times 3. So that'd be 10 plus 12, 22. All right, so cell references. I'm having cell C2 reference cell A2 and cell B2. All right, the ref cell references is very, very useful for us when we're making input-output tables. So let's move on to problem three here. All right, in problem three, we're going to make an input-output table where I input some values for T and I output some values for the function g of t. g of t is the function 6 times natural log of 40t minus 3. Notice I typed that title up here in cell b1, but it's kind of bleeding over into cell c1. You can put your cursor up between cell b and c until it looks like a vertical line with arrows pointing in either direction. You double click. It will readjust column B so that it's wide enough to hold all of that. All right, in column A here, I've put the values of T that I'm interested in plugging into the function, 0 0.076, 0 0.09. Here I typed 5 divided by 6, and Excel has automatically uh, thought that I meant May 6th, because I typed, typed 5 slash 6. Now, I don't mean that. I don't mean May 6th. I mean the number 5 6. So I want to right-click on this cell when that happens, or you can right-click on the whole column, and Format Cells. I want it to change to a number. And I'm going to, again, take it out to, like, 13 decimal places. I want Excel to give me 5 divided by 6, and it's rounding that to 13 decimal places. I did that by changing this cell to number and rounding to 13 places, then typing 5 divided by 6, so it doesn't default to thinking that's a date.
All right. Now, cell column B in cell B2, I want it to equal 6 times natural log of 40 times this number T. T is 0 0.076 minus 3. Now, to do that, I'm going to type equals 6 times natural log of 40 times. I could type the number 0 0.076 to represent T. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make a cell reference. I want it to equal 40 times this cell, minus 3. I'm doing that so that whatever I put over here in this cell will be referenced to calculate this value over here in cell B2. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is because the next cell down, it's really going to do the same pattern. I want this cell to equal 6 times natural log of 40 times the cell to the left. Right? This is the T value that I want it to reference. Instead of doing this over and over and over again, you know, this cell references the cell to the left, and this cell references the cell to the left. Instead, let me go back up here and delete this. I'm going to go back to the very first um, formula I wrote, and I'm going to drag this formula down so that it keeps doing that pattern. Every time um, you find the value in the column B, what it's going to do is reference the cell to the left to get the value of T. Now to do this, I wrote the formula in column B in cell B2. I notice my cursor right now is a white cross. I'm going to put my cursor in the bottom right corner of cell B2. Notice when I do it, it changes it from a white cross to a little black cross. Notice that again. Down in the right corner, it changes it to a little black cross. Now, as soon as it looks like a little black cross in the bottom right corner, hold down the left mouse button and drag it down. When I let go, it fills the cells in. And let's go ahead and look at one of these cells. I'm going to click into cell B3. Notice the formula that it wrote in there. Let me double click it so you can see. 6 times natural log of 40 times cell A3. It's referencing the cell to the left. Let's go down to the next one. Again, this cell, it wrote 6 times natural log of 40 times A4, the cell to the left. So when I drug the formula down, it copied the pattern. Each of these cells in column B are now referencing the cell to the left to get the value of T.